There it is. All right. Uh, so I want to start this morning off uh, just with a reminder, because um, I know we need it. Um, so if you've been in small groups, um, you would have covered uh, chapters 6 and 7 of Gentle and Lowly. Um, we're in my small group, I have to admit, we're behind, so I just studied this. But um, it's really cool, and uh, we're looking at the verse, John 6, 37. And he says, whoever, um, whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. That's the King James Version of saying, I will never, ever cast out. Um, that's really big when you think about it. That at the, at the heart of that, God is cutting down all of my objections that say, well, God, I'm too much of a sinner, or I don't want to lay this on you. It's too inconvenient. Whatever it may be, we, ha we offer all these excuses for our sins but God says, whoever comes to me, I will not ever cast out. Um, let's reflect on that in our worship. Let's turn our sins over to the Father who actually loves us, cares for us, and is in every way equipped to forgive us. Let's join uh, sing and worship together as we sing Mighty to Save. Yeah. 
Indeed, all glory to God this morning. Are you thankful for the choir being back? They all sounded good this morning. That was good. And then the praise team uh, always does a fantastic job. And I don't want to, I don't want to like call anybody out, but I'm going to call somebody out. Like Carly, she's like, <laughs> she's looking at me like, I hate you. <laughs> I mean, this is one cool young lady. She is up here in her canvas high tops. Before the service, I don't know if you saw her up here in the, the corner, she was, she was chugging some chocolate milk. And I'm like, man. <laughs> she loves Jesus, too. And so, um, <clears throat> yeah, great job, praise team. Great job, choir. Uh, good to see you all this morning. And indeed, all glory to God. I appreciate uh, you being here today. If you're visiting with us, thank you uh, for uh, just uh, coming and gracing us with your presence, and I truly mean that. Uh, we're so glad you're here uh, today. Um, it's not by accident. I, I truly believe that, that, that none of us are here today by accident, that God has something for us. Uh, he's already given us a lot, uh, but he has even more for us this morning, and so so thankful that you're here, um, and, and if you're our guest today, welcome. Um, if you did not stop by the um, table at the front, please do that. There's uh, information about our church, and and um, uh, be glad to, to give that to you. I am working on the cups now. I, the cups are on order, but they're back ordered, okay? So they're making me eat my words. Like several weeks ago, I said, we're going to have cups, right, for our visitors. And, we have, and so those are coming. It's just going to take a little time. So, anyways, you, you, if you're a guest today, be sure to stop by the information table, and, uh, and just please know that you're, you're uh, welcome, and we're glad that you're here today. Uh, we are receiving um, an offering and a love offering today. We're not passing plates. Haven't done that in about a year and a half. Um, God continues to just bless uh, through you folks, and I'm so thankful for that. But there are drop boxes located around the building uh, one right outside these, these double doors back here, another one by the information table in the front. Um, if you have a, just a general offering, you can drop it in those drop boxes. We are receiving a love offering today for the Gaona family, who are missionaries here with us today, missionaries to Spain. Today they're missionaries to West Rome Baptist Church, amen? And, uh, and so uh, they're going to encourage us, uh, they have already have encouraged us this morning, and, and uh, G is going to come here in a few minutes and, and just open God's word and preach. Um, and so uh, if, you're, if you came prepared to give for a love offering, mark it. If you're going to drop it in the two boxes, either the two boxes that I already talked about, mark it and, and put it in there. If you don't mark it, put it in the bo uh, box over by the world map uh, behind his display. Just sneak back there and drop it in there. And, uh, and so that all, all the money in that box will go to our missionary family today. All right, that makes sense? I hope so. Sometimes I wonder if I make sense. But um, anyways, um, appreciate your, your prayers for my family and my stepmother's passing this week. And then uh, the Perry family, um, uh, Tara's uh, father also passed away this week. And so let's continue to pray for Michael and Tara and, and Robin Joanna and the rest of the Perry family, uh, the Lawrence family, uh, certainly praying uh, for uh, Martin and Charlene and Jim and Judy and uh, the passing of uh, Cindy uh, from COVID complications, uh, COVID pneumonia. And so uh, would you just, can we just join together in prayer uh, this morning and um, just thank the Lord that his mercies are new every day, that, uh, that all that we just sang was tr is true, um, and, and we believe it. And so let's, let's go before the Lord and just express our faith and trust in him. Father, we do Lord, this morning, lean on you. Lord, you are, you are the only pillar strong enough to hold us. Jesus came, took on human flesh, and bore the weight of our infirmities, our, sick, our, our weaknesses, our sin, our sinfulness. And he did it all without sin. And yet he surrendered himself to suffer and die. To suffer and die to, to bear the wages of our sin, not deserving it himself. And Father, not only did he do that, but Lord, on the third day he arose. He is risen. 
And he is our living and ascended Savior, who is our intercessor and our advocate, standing next to, next to us before you, standing in between us, pleading his blood. We thank you for the comfort, the security that we have in Christ today. Father, we thank you for the comfort of the Spirit of God, the great comforter, who comforts us in all of our weakness, in all of the seasons of loss that we face. We, we trust you, Lord, because you have given us a great comforter. You have given us a great savior. Your love has been demonstrated to us at Calvary. And so we express our faith this morning, our trust in you. We pray for, I pray for my own family. I pray for the Lawrence family, for the Perry family today. That, Father, you would bring peace and comfort in the midst of these losses that we've experienced this week. And, Father, may those who do not yet know the gospel in each one of our families, may, may, may you use this time whether that's through a funeral service and the preaching of the gospel there or, or whether it's through conversations that, that we can have with those who do not yet know you. Father, would you draw the lost to a saving knowledge of Christ? Father, I, I thank you this morning that Jesus is King, that he is Savior, that he is the spotless Lamb of God and we behold him today. And as our gaze, our eyes are fixed upon him, fill us with your glory. Show us your glory, Lord. Bless G and Ceci as they come and minister to us this morning. We pray, God, that, that you would just continue to fill their hearts with the gospel and the glory of Christ and let that shine through their testimony and their preaching. Use G today as he preaches, Father, to to just speak to each one of our hearts as you would see fit. Thank you for this family and bringing them to us today. We ask for your good pleasure to rest upon them. And we love you and we praise you for it. In Christ's name, amen. Well, G and Cecia Gaona, come on up. Brother. And then uh, their, their kids are gonna sing too. Gabriel, are you singing today? No. He, he got scared. He got he was a scared look. Uh, Abby, are you singing? No, she's not singing. I knew, I knew they weren't. I'm just giving them a hard time. Anyways, Lord bless you. Welcome this morning. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I won't sing. <laughs> She's going to sing. Um, thank you so much again for, for having us today here. And uh, we're going to sing a song. She's going to sing a song, my wife. And it's a song that has been a blessing to our family. And we're going to share that with you today. Not for 
My name is Gerardo Gaona, my friends call me G, and this is my wife. Hi, my name is Cecia Gaona, missionaries to Spain. We have three precious children, Alessandra, Abby, and Gabriel, and we would like to tell you a little bit about us. Cecia and I were born and raised in Mexico, in Monterey, Mexico, and at early age, teenagers, we heard God's call for missions. We got married in 2006 and moved as missionaries to San Luis Potosí, Mexico, where we got the opportunity and the blessing to plant two churches in a period of uh, 10 years. After 10 years in San Luis Potosí, and because our strong desire to reach others for Christ, we partnered with Friendship Baptist Church in Owasso, Oklahoma, and now we're very excited to share with you that we're starting our journey to go to Spain and continue planting churches. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing people finding Jesus, finding the hope that we have in Jesus when they get to know Him as their personal Savior. When people experience His goodness, His love, His mercy, lives are transformed. The gospel is redemption, it's forgiveness, it's the beginning of a new life. 
life that we find in Jesus, the hope of eternal life. And that's the message that we want to take to Santander, Spain. Santander, Spain is a city of the ocean, green fields, amazing people, and also cows. <laughs> in Santander, people need to hear the good news of Jesus. The city is situated in the province of Cantabria with more than half a million people. Though Spain may seem to be a religious country because of its history, religious buildings, and traditions, the truth is that the message has been distorted. People have lost interest in God, and there is a lot of confusion and misunderstanding about who Jesus really is. It was very interesting to find out that there's only about four Christian churches in Santander, with only one of them being a Baptist church. For us, there's no doubt that there's a lot of need in Santander, Spain. We want to go, and in Jesus' name, to make a huge impact with the gospel and create a movement of Christ followers who share the good news of Jesus across the street and around the world. The scripture says, two are better than one, and a cord of three strands is now quickly broken. We are thrilled to partner with another two missionary families and together be vessels that God can use in Spain for His honor and glory. In fact, they share with us a little bit of their experience in Santander. In our experience, most of the people here in Northern Spain have heard about Jesus, but most of them are not believers, not religious, and many of them are atheists. The opportunity is great, and I'm amazed that in a city this size with tens of thousands of people, you can drive for miles and not see a single church, let alone a, a Baptist church. Why, why, why? There's just, there's no churches here. This is, there's, there's a few Catholic churches that we've seen, right. but they're empty. And we can ask our neighbors and ask them, where's this church, where do you go to church? They have no idea what that is or what it means. It's just not in this culture and there's great opportunity to share the gospel because of that and to plant churches. Please pray for us. Pray for our family, our children. Pray for God's provision in our lives and ministry and that soon we will raise the support that we need to be in Santander, Spain and fulfill the call that God has for our lives. Thank you so much and God bless you. Well, good morning, church. It's been a blessing already to be here with you all. Thank you so much um, for trusting and inviting us. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. <laughs> he just, you know, made a call probably. <laughs> and uh, we, we're, we're happy to be here. Um, it's always challenging to be in a new church. Um, but thank God for his goodness and his love that we feel immediately. That's what God does uh, no matter who you are and no matter where you go in the world, right? So we feel very welcome already. Thank you so much for that. And I heard pastors saying, oh, we've been blessed uh, by having this family, but actually we are blessed by being here and thank God for that. It's, never, it, it's always an honor for me to have the opportunity to open the word and share it. And uh, I never take this um, just randomly and easy. It's always challenging. It's always a uh, big responsibility. And I hope that God will use it this morning to encourage you, encourage me as well. Okay, so let me start this way. Um, all of us, we're in this um, journey of making decisions every day, right? We make decisions every Every minute, every hour, every, every day, every week. And those decisions will mark our months, years. And then we end up uh, telling uh, the story of our lives um, to other people and to the world according to those decisions that we make in every moment in our lives, right? So that's how it works. That's how it works. So I believe that it's important to take good and wise decisions, right, in our lives. Maybe you're in that position right now. Maybe you're in this point where like, oh, 
This is so important. And I'm in this situation where I must have the wisdom from God for this decision because it's going to be difficult. Uh, what, what, what is going to happen if I give this step of faith? What is going to happen if I take this other decision in my life? Um, all you know probably today is that God is uh, asking you to make, a, and, uh, to make this decision where it's going to take you to something new, something different. Something that was probably not in your plans, right? Maybe you're in that position for others of you, this will come later in life, right? But maybe you're in that situation today. And the point is this, we all know that probably God is asking, you for, asking us for something more, but we put the things on hold and we live in delayed uh, many times in our lives with those decisions that God wants us to to make in life. Why? I don't know. Sometimes I believe that it's because we're afraid, right? What if I take this decision? What is going to be the outcome of that decision? I, I want more details, right? And we hold on those decisions. We hold. We step back sometimes because we're afraid. When we, you want to give a step of faith, you want to know what it's going to come after, right? We want that for our lives. And it requires faith. It requires faith. So how do we do it? How we step out on faith and go towards those purposes of God for our lives? How do we do this? I believe the answer is fixing our eyes in Jesus. Will you say amen to that? Fixing our eyes in Jesus because he's the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen? That's what the scripture says. Fixing our eyes in Jesus. So I want to encourage you today to give that step of faith and go towards the purposes of God for your life. Today I want to talk about go. Okay? Go towards those purposes of God for your life life. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a story from the Old Testament that it's applicable to our lives today. Okay? It's an old story uh, from the Old Testament that it's going to illustrate in a very accurate way what we need today for our lives. And I want to start this way. There was a man um, named Tara. Okay? There was a man named Tara. Uh, who had several children. One of them was Abram. Abram got married with Sarai. Later on, God will change their names to Abraham and Sarah. Awesome. You read your Bible, right? <laughs> yes, yes. We're going to talk about those two. But before Abraham and Sarah, they were Abram and Sarai. Okay, something like that. Okay. So one day, uh, Sarah, or Sarai, she was sterile. She was bearing. She couldn't have children. She couldn't conceive, okay? And one day, God comes to their lives, and he comes to, with a great promise to them, and he comes with, um, you know, sometimes God comes to us, and he's going to speak to our lives, and we're like, oh, what exactly are you saying, Lord? So he comes to them in this way. And this is what it says in the scripture in Genesis chapter 12. We're going to be there. Chapter 12, verse 1, this is what it says. The Lord said unto Jesus, uh, I'm sorry, the Lord said unto Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's house to the land I will show you. Go from uh, your country, your people, your father's house to the land. I will show you. Now, it may sound obvious, but in order for you to go somewhere, you don't need to be able to and willing to leave the place where you are standing, right? If I want to go right there, I have to be willing to actually leave this place, this spot right here. I'm doing it right now, okay? I'm willing to leave that place, and I'm here today, okay? So, that's that's exactly what God is requiring, what God is asking from Abram to do. He's like, hey, I want you to go from your country, your people, your father's house, to the land that I will show you. Okay? And 
this was not an easy thing because his life, his life is about to change. He needed to leave what was familiar to him, what was uh, comfortable, what was known, uh, predictable, uh, you know, where you have uh, security and, and assurance that things are, gonna, are okay right now. He needed to leave all that and to move towards what God is calling him to move. Are we, are we we're together in this? Yes? So that's what is happening right here. He needed to leave what is familiar, comfortable, predictable, easier, and known in order to go to the purposes of God. And I believe God sometimes comes to our lives with the same instruction, with the same encouragement, with the same urgency. I want you to leave the place where you are and move towards the purpose and plan that I have for you. But in order for us to do that, we have to be willing to leave this place, okay? And move that way. The problem is this, um, it's not easy, right? <laughs> so two things that we're gonna see today. We have to be willing to leave our comfort zone, okay? To leave our comfort zone. In this part is where you're gonna make decisions that will affect not only your own life, but the life of other people that you may influence throughout your, uh, your life, right? Um, you're going to make a decision that is going to impact not only your life, but the life of others, maybe your own family, maybe your friends, maybe people at work, maybe, you know, uh, those that just know you for long ago. And you're going to move from this place because God is asking you to move to this other place. And that's something that is going to affect not only your life, but the life of others as well. It wasn't easy for Abraham or Abram. It wasn't easy. In fact, it required faith. Um, this is, again, what he says. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's house to the land I will show you. I will show you. It was necessary for him to leave what he knew, to leave his comfort zone. Now, the problem, if is this if you're like me i prefer to stay in the place what i know <laughs> what is comfortable right i prefer to stay where i have confidence in the things that i'm doing in fact i prefer to stay what i have control of the situation <laughs> right because oh it's not easy that's the problem so it requires faith definitely and that's why Fixing our eyes in Jesus is going to help us to do that in our lives. It wasn't easy for him. It won't be easy for us either. I want you to put yourself in Abram's feet for a minute, okay? If that's, uh, that's how he says. I mean, put yourself in Abraham, Abraham's situation, okay? And, 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 and just imagine, God comes to you and say, Hey, I want you to leave your country, okay? What you know, your family, okay, and go to the place I want to tell you. What will be your response? Uh, your, your response. What will be that? Uh, where? <laughs> first, in first place, where are we going, right? <laughs> in first place. In second place, it's like, God, come on. You bless me with a house. I'm almost done paying it. Okay. <laughs> Why would you want me to move, right? Plus, the school of my kids is, I mean, they're doing great. You know, they're, they're doing all these good things. Um, plus, I like the, 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 the place where I go and cut my hair, right? It's nice. What if I don't find it over there, right? I don't even know where I'm going. So, what is it? So if you, the problem, if you're like me, I prefer this, right? I prefer this. So, it requires faith for him to move. Now, here's the thing. Here's the encouraging part. Uh, you won't go and move to just whatever. You won't go and move to, to chasing the wind, right? Like, oh, okay, let's go. Where? I don't know. Let's go. Was well, practically kind of what God said to Abraham. But here's the, 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 the Abraham. But here's the, the, the awesome part of it. You have to leave your comfort zone and move and go towards 
God's purposes for your life. Amen? And that's what has to give you confidence in your life. You're going to move towards God's plan for you. Towards God's plans, purposes for you. So in the story, if we keep reading, God is going to speak to him again. And practically in this verse, what we're going to find out is that uh, God is going to come and give him a promise. And also he's going to tell him what he's going to do in his life and through his life. Okay? This is awesome. This is amazing because even though the God is not telling him where he's going to go exactly, he's revealing what he's going to do in his life and through his life. Let's read it. Okay? It's, it's amazing. Genesis 12, 2 and 3. This is what it says. I will make you a great nation. Okay? Oh, this is, gonna, this is what I'm going to do through you. Okay? I want to make you a great nation. I will what? Bless you. Oh, this is, what I, this is what I'm going to do in you. Right? I want to bless you. I want to make you a great nation. I make you a name great. A, name, a great name. And you should be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The only problem here that doesn't make sense is that Abraham cannot have children. Neither his wife. <laughs> right? They cannot have children. So God is like, I want to make you a great nation. And he's like, okay. Awesome, right? That's what's happening right there. But God is saying, hey, this is what I want to I do in you and through you. So again, you know, just uh, imagine and think, think a little bit deeper in, in Abraham's situation. It's like, Lord, I, I'm 75 years old, okay? And I've tried, seriously. <laughs> it's not working. But I'll try. It's been fun to you. Okay. But, like, seriously, God, what's going on, right? What's going on here? Now, this is, this is, the, this is the thing here. I, I want you to get this, please. How many times have you ever um, made a promise to God? How many times? Like, hey, Lord, seriously, bless me this time. I promise I'll be faithful to you next time. I am in the whole financially speaking, so I need your blessings. But next time, if you bless me, I promise I give back to you what is yours. <laughs> I promise, Lord. I promise, right? Or, or Lord, Lord, I, I promise that only this time, please work in the, in the police officer's heart <laughs> not to give me a ticket. I promise, I won't speed again. I won't speed again. I know it's 50, but I was 70. It's okay. But I promise, Lord, right? Or, or remember when you were studying, or probably those of you that are studying today, right? Like, Lord, the, just this once, help me to pass the test. Next time, I'll study. I promise I, I will study next time. But please, please, a miracle right here, okay? Right? And we think that we're going to change by the promises that we make to God, right? That's what we think. That's, that's why we promise things to God. Yes, at least next time I'll change, right? But here's the thing. We don't change by the promises that we make to God. We change by believing in the promises that He makes to us. Amen? And this is the situation here. This is a situation. It was not about logic things. It was just about God saying, this is what is going to happen to you, Abraham. This is what is going happen, to happen to you. Amazing. And what happened? What happened next? What happens is that he believed and he went. He believed and he went. And it's amazing. Let's read it right here. In verse 4, this is what it says. So Abram what? Abram what? Went. went. I love it. So Abram went. And the Lord told him, um, as, as the Lord told him, I'm, I'm sorry. And he was what? 75 years old. It's never late to move towards God's purposes. Amen? 
It's never late. It's never late. Like, like, oh, I need you to move. Where? I don't know, but I need you to move, right? To the place where you are, to the comfort zone that you've been for a few years. I want you to move. It's never late. It's never late. So Abram went. Now, God is going to come again. This happened in, in one moment of Abram's life. But then, about 10 years passed until God comes again and talks to him. And from this moment where God spoke to him to, till God comes again and talks to him again, about 10 years passed. And Abram hasn't seen much of the promise that God made to him. How would you feel about delay? How will you feel about, you know, God making a promise to you and then you don't see it happening? Oh, anxiety, right? Uncertainty, maybe doubts, maybe, right? When, when you believe with all your heart that God is going to do something and it's not happening, it's not about what people is telling you. No, 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 no. You know in your heart. You know because your strong relationship with God through His Word and prayer and His Spirit in you, you know that God is going to fulfill a promise in your life, but you didn't see it happening. Oh, how does that feel? Scary, right? Oh, yeah. Just imagine. Ten years have passed and nothing has happened, right? So Abram... He didn't doubt. He was just like concerned. When is, when is this going to happen, right? You came like about 10 years ago and you told me something and it's fine. I believe it. I believe it. Would you just tell me how this is going to happen, right? And this is, this is what God comes and says to him. This is, this is what God says to him. Uh, 15 verse 1. After these things, some things happen in between. The Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be what? Afraid. Yes, yes, totally. Because when you don't see it happening, I'm telling you, anxiety, uncertainty, fears, all that comes into us. All that comes into, in, in, into our souls. Uh, and says this, Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your what? Shield. I love that. You're an exceedingly great reward. I am enough for you. Amen. I am God. That's what God was telling him. I am God. I am enough for you. But I am going to bless you as I told you. Amen. And then and, and Abraham was like, okay, Lord, but can you tell me how? So apparently they were in a close place or something because God told him, okay, get out. Look at the stars. Can you count them? And I thought, I think he said, no, <laughs> something like that. Can you count them? Oh, I can. Well, like that, your descendants will be. You're going to have, I mean, you're going to be a great nation. Great nation, Abraham. After 10 years, God comes with the same promise to him. It is amazing. And what happened? What happens here? Well, verse 6. And he what? believed he believed so he went and he what believed he went and he believed so you won't find again abraham saying lord no it doesn't make sense to me no i'll stay no you know 10 years already i waited for you 10 years no you won't find that no, you won't find that. And sometimes, in order for us to go and move towards God's purposes for our lives, it will be necessary for you and for me to leave the place maybe where you are, okay? The position you have, okay? The work you have, the life you have, uh, what defines you today, okay? Everything that defines you, right, to who you are, it's probably necessary for you to leave it, okay? The habits you have formed, the, um, 
along the years, right? It's probably necessary for you to leave those habits away or transform those habits into the habits that God wants you to have, right? The traditions you have, probably how God wants you to move from this way of doing to this other way because it becomes a tradition in your life, right? Probably God wants you to move in that direction. You may need to renounce to who you are in order to become the person God wants you to be. Amen? And when I, when I, when I say this, I can't stop but remembering Peter. Do you remember Peter? Oh, Peter. I love Peter. In fact, I, I, I don't know if this is good or not, it's according to your perspective, but I kind of like Peter because I identify myself with him. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, better not, better not. I was about to say Spanish word. Uh, that's why they laughed. Um, you don't feel that way? Like you, you want everything with God and then you hold back, right? Right? Do you identify, do you identify, identify yourself like that? I want everything with you, Lord. And then, is it nice for you to come and die with me? No, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know you. Wow. So I was Peter, okay? But it wasn't always like that. Um, so Peter, right? Apparently, he already knew Jesus when, when Jesus approached him. Uh, probably Jesus was already famous by the time when, Jesus, when Peter has been working all night long trying to fish. He was a fisherman. And uh, in the morning, you know, uh, he's, he's there with, with the boat. Jesus is here preaching to the crowds. And, and, and um, suddenly the, the crowds were kind of like overwhelming Jesus. And then Jesus is like, hey, Peter, can I get into your boat and preach from there? I think it's going to be, we have more order right here or something. And Jesus is like, yeah, I come into my boat. So after Jesus delivering his word, and, and um, he told Peter, hey, let's go fish. And, and Peter told him, right, like, hey, Jesus, we already did it, right? All night long, didn't work. Um, but... I respect you, like I heard what you were saying, I've heard about you before, maybe I already met you before, I don't know, um, and, 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 and they go, right, they went, and you know the story, Got, catch a lot of fish, lots of it, right, and when that miracle, miracle happened, uh, Peter was amazed, he was like, you are from God, in, in fact, it, it, stay away from me, Master, Lord, stay, because I am a sinner. Like, don't get close to me. But Jesus' answer was totally different. He goes, no, Peter. No, no, no. Or Cephas. For now on, you, I want to call you Peter, and, and you're going to be a fisher of man, right? You're going to be a fisher of man. And guess what? Guess what? He believed, right? And what? And he went. <laughs> he believed and he went. And it's amazing because his life was transformed. You know, that's what happens when you have a personal encounter with Jesus. Your life is transformed. So if you're here this morning and you've been looking for something else, you might be new to this church and someone invited you to come because they wanted you to listen about God, about Jesus. Well, guess what? Jesus wants an encounter with you and when you trust in him when you put your faith in him you won't be the same he will transform you and if you consider yourself a sinner not enough to come before the lord don't worry about that because that's exactly what he wants he wants sinners to turn to him so he can cleanse them and loves them and transform them amen when you follow Jesus, I mean, Peter's life, it's amazing because then, after that encounter, his life was different. You find uh, Peter preaching in the book of Acts with power and boldness and lots of people coming to Christ. And his story, the story of Peter, keeps resounding and teaching us today. Amen? Because there was one life that had an encounter with Jesus and was willing to leave everything and follow him. In other words, he was, living to, he was willing to leave his comfort zone and go towards the purposes of Jesus for his life. Amen? That is amazing. That's exactly what happens to you and me when we put our faith in him. And we're willing to.
to follow him. And we are willing to follow him. So the question is, what is God asking you to go? Where is God asking you to go in your life? What is that comfort zone that God wants you to move from and go towards his purposes? Maybe, maybe to spend more time with your family. Maybe it will require some planning, right? And maybe you say, you know what, uh, gee, whatever, but I spend quality time with my family. Yeah, but let me tell you what, quantity is good as well, <laughs> right? Quantity is good as well. I'll prove you this. Um, do, you like, do you like fries? Yes? Do you like french fries? Yeah? I like french fries. They're amazing. <laughs> right? Now, do you want two fries? The best fries in the world. Quality. <laughs> or you want at least like 10 of those. <laughs> at least 10 of those, right? But the same one, the quality one, right? Quality and quantity matters, right? Maybe God wants you to move into that in your family. He wants you to be a spiritual leader, not only a physical provider, but a spiritual leader in your, life, in, in your family, whoever you are. I'm talking about mom, dad, either one, right? He wants you to pour more into your family, into your marriage, maybe. Maybe he wants you to get out of trouble, financially speaking. He wants you to move from these habits, bad habits that you have in your life. And he wants you to move towards this direction. And, and he's maybe speaking to you today. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe he wants you to turn into a Christian that comes and sits and listens and smiles to be a Christian that comes and serves with a smile. Amen? And pour into this body. Amen? To be used by Him. He wants you to step out of your comfort zone and get into the road, right? Let's do it. Yes, let's, I don't know. I don't know what God is asking you today. You know better. I'm just giving you some options right here, right? In order for you to go to God's purposes for your life, you need to be willing to leave your comfort zone. You know, part of our story has been that. 1999 is when I surrendered my life uh, to God to be used by Him whenever, whatever, right? It wasn't easy. I, told, I shared with you that this morning. They were preaching the book of Jonah, and it was clear to me that God was speaking to my life. And He was saying, I felt like I was Jonah, right? And, like, and God was telling me, go to Nineveh, right? Go to Nineveh. And that night, um, 1999, I, I was on my knees on a, on a platform like this and I was on my knees crying and crying and crying because I knew that was serious I knew that was that was serious that was a serious thing and I cry I cry I cry like like a baby and say Lord I will go not knowing exactly what that meant you understand I, I will go 2005 our pastor came in Monterey and said hey if you and Cecilia get married I will send you to to open a church because there's a need we need to open churches will you go and I prayed Lord if if, if you th if you think I can I'll go Lord I will go I will go not knowing exactly what I'm man right not knowing that 2006 we went. We got married in January. By September, same year, we were going our way to another place, another place, different, and to start a church. By 2014, we were already inaugurating the second church. Bless God. Praise God for that, right? In 2016, because we felt that God was asking us to leave our comfort zone, if we put it that way. He was asking us something else from our lives. We decided to come to the States, getting into the unknown of religious visas. Very difficult. <laughs> and, and, and we got here, uh, not knowing exactly what that meant, to be honest with you. And, and now we're here. And now we're here, and we are in Minato. Manito. My goodness. What's wrong? Yeah? Yes. Yes. 
and we share with you our testimony. And we think and we believe with all our hearts that God wants us again to leave our comfort zone. You have a beautiful country. You are beautiful people. I mean it. I mean it with all my heart. It, it wouldn't be easy. It wouldn't be as easy as it has been for us to be in the States if it wouldn't be for the people that loves us so much in Oklahoma. People like you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. We're going to leave this comfort zone. And our prayer is that in a year and a half, we'll move towards God's purposes for our lives. We don't know exactly how it's going to be. We think, we plan, whatever, but we don't know exactly how that's going to be. Right? The only thing we know is that God wants us to move from this area in our lives and move to, towards His purposes. The question, again, is where is God asking you to go? What is asking God you to move? What is your comfort zone? How would you define your comfort zone today? And where is that God wants you to be today? Right? That will be the question. Don't come tomorrow telling Pastor Jeff, Pastor, I quit my job. Here I am. Because that's what she was saying. Like, leave your comfort zone. Like, quit your job. It's not what I'm saying. <laughs> right? No, 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 no. Talking about getting to God's word, right? Be willing to, to, to listen to the spirit of God in your life. And with that confidence, take the challenge and move to the place, to the purpose that God wants for your life. Amen? That's what God wants. Maybe to start a small group. I don't know. I heard you guys have small groups. Maybe to be, you know, the, the hostess. Maybe, maybe to lead a small group. Maybe, right? Maybe missions. Maybe you want to come to Spain with us. Maybe, right? Hey, the more, the merrier. Really, for real. For real. It's, I'm, yes, I'm serious here. Um, I don't know. Maybe God wants you to share all the love that is in your family and, and, and foster or, or, or adopt someone, maybe, right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The only thing is that it won't be easy. It won't be easy, but God didn't call us to an easy life. God called us to trust in Him by faith. Amen? And He's with us. He is with us. He is with us. Now, what is it? Why? Why is it that even though we know that God wants something from our lives or that God is asking us, asking us to move from this to that, why is it that we hesitate? Why is it that we don't give that step? And I will say it's lack of faith, right? It's lack of faith. We struggle because lack of faith. How is it that Abraham was able to do it? How? Well, this is what the scripture says. Hebrews 11, 8. By what? By what? Faith. Yeah. Abraham obeyed when he was called to go where? Out of the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he what? Went out. Not knowing where he was going. Wow. That's, that's tough. <laughs> wow. When God calls you to go, go. Amen? Go. Go. Don't, don't, don't miss the blessings that God has for you in the other side of that decision. In the other side of that decision. My prayer today is about faith. You will take away those obstacles. You know, you would throw away those obstacles that are, um, you know, holding you back from taking that decision. That will be my prayer today for you. And my prayer is that God will lead you and guide you every step of the way. Amen? Even though that it's his seems late, well, he's always working. Amen? He is always working. I'll leave you with this. I'll leave you with this. 
you may say, well, God revealed and made a promise to Abraham. He told him what he will do in him and through him. What about, has, what, what about the promises that God has made to us? And I will say there are a lot. Amen? There are a lot in the Bible. This is what it says. I'll never leave you. No what? No forsake you. Amen? He's with us to the ends of the world. Amen? That's a promise. That's a promise. Nothing can and will separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Amen? That's a promise for us today. He will meet every need of our lives. Amen? When we put him first, he will meet any and every need that we have. He will do it. He gives us peace that surpasses all of understanding. Amen? Those are his promises. Those are his promises for our lives. Would you go? Would you go? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we love you so much. We thank you for your goodness, your love, your mercy, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done for us on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. I pray this morning for this precious church, Father, here in West Rome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the work they're doing, um, how loving people they are, Lord. Use them, Lord, to impact uh, the community and from here to the world, Lord, across the street and around the world. Father, I don't know the situations and the lives uh, here and in this church, but you do know, Lord. So I pray, Father, that during this time, uh, Lord, that they, they will have a time to, to, to pray to you and, and Lord, to, to make decisions before you, Lord, and that they will be willing, and that they will, will be willing, Lord, to leave their comfort zone and move towards your purposes. And as you are right now, I would just like to pray for you. And I'm, I'm going to, after I pray, I would like to give uh, the pulpit to Pastor Jeff this morning. Let me pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, again. For everyone here this morning, that they might be praying to you, Father, um, getting that confidence and, and, and that assurance that you're going to be with them along the way when they make the decision to move from their comfort zone, Lord, to towards your purposes, Lord. I pray for each one of them, Lord, this morning. Thank you again for your goodness, your love, and your mercy, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have a, a need or anything this morning, um, don't be afraid to come to the altar. Lay that down before the Lord as we sing. For those of you, let's, let's go ahead and stand and sing.
to be on deputation. That, Lord, that you would get them on the field as soon as possible. As soon as your will allows. And we pray for these young kids, Lord. We lift them up to you. We pray that um, as they step onto the mission field as well, that you would protect them. That their hearts would be stirred for you as well. And we pray for Cecia and G. We pray for their marriage, Lord, that you would protect that. Satan loves to attack in so many different ways. So we pray for their hand, your hand of protection on their marriage, on their kids, on their ministry. And we're grateful for them, Lord. We also want to lift up Pastor Jeff to you. We pray that you give him the words to speak as he preaches at this funeral this afternoon. And we pray for those who are in attendance that they would have ears to hear. That as he boldly proclaims your gospel, Lord, you would open their ears and their hearts to receive Christ. And we are grateful, Lord, for the opportunity to gather this morning. And we just love you and praise you. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. So if you guys want to head out to your table, make the escape right now, get out ahead of the crowd. I'll do a few announcements to distract everybody. So small groups, 
Small groups tonight, if you're not in a small group, it's not too late. Please get involved and engaged. Um, Dick Bradstreet's staring at me because he wants me to remind you to fill out the survey. I can see him out of the corner of my eye. Even those of you who don't go, he would like you to fill out the survey as well. Um, youth group tonight, 4.30. Anybody have anything else? Open mic night. All right. Stop by the table, visit our missionaries. They did a fantastic job. I pray that you take his challenge to heart, that uh, whatever God is asking you to do, that you would be willing to go. So y'all are dismissed.